Welcome back to another day on the ranch. Today I am building a workbench. So I got a little bit of bonus money the last couple weeks and so I purchased a miter saw and a table saw and I wanted somewhere where I could put those. They wouldn't be in the way but I'd have a nice work surface to use them on um, that wouldn't just be like what I'm doing right now which is on the floor having to clear a bunch of space and you know just make a mess. So I found on Etsy uh, so a bunch there's a bunch of different build plans on Etsy. I, I found one that I figured would work best for me This is what I got and we'll we'll throw a link in the description to this particular plan It's a fairly small compact Bench so you've got the table saw there and the the miter saw and this miter saw is actually on kind of like a, a little shelf there which flips down when you're not using it so then when you're not using it when it flips down you basically have a little piece that you can fill in that part of the tabletop and now it's just one flush surface that was really appealing to me and plus it's on casters so i'll be able to roll it around in the garage wherever i need it and then obviously underneath we'll be able to build a little bit of storage space down there uh, and i just figured this would be really efficient really good use of the space in the garage while maximizing the potential of the work that can be done on it I've got everything I need to finish this. And so now it's just a matter of building it. I don't know how long this is gonna take me. I'm hoping I can finish it in the next couple of days, uh, but I'm gonna try and get as much done as I can tonight. Total dimensions is gonna be 40 inches by 66, so that's what, about just shy of three and a half feet by just shy of seven feet or six feet. Yeah, about five and a half by three and a half, give or take. And then, of course, I do need to address the, the rest of the garage because the other workbench that I built a while back, uh, there's no workspace whatsoever. We've got some work to do. Beautiful. I'll go ahead and mark right there. And then I know that the blade needs to be, basically the left side of the blade needs to be right in line with that, and then it makes up the difference. Why are you so loud? So a couple of challenges I've run into already. One, I can't find my pocket hole jig because this place is a disaster. I have one. The box that it's supposed to be in, however it's not in there. I've looked at multiple places. I've, <laughs> I've pretty much scanned this entire... Um, Entire workbench as best I can, haven't found it. I'm thinking it may potentially be in the in the barn. I think that's the last place I used it. And then also, I don't know if I just didn't cut these boards right. One thing is the in the instructions, it does provide a cut list of, hey, here's all of the different sizes you need cut. Um, however, it doesn't say like, out of an eight foot board, here's the pieces that you wanna cut to make sure you maximize your 10 boards um so it didn't have that and so i was just kind of running and gunning trying to make the best cuts that i could uh trying to make sure i can serve as much as i possibly could for later cuts I'm, i already need at least one more board possibly two which i don't have so i'm gonna have to go get those tomorrow but yeah i still need to find this pocket hole jig this is real life folks a disaster Found it in my handy dandy uh, tool belt. I got the, the main frame done back here. You can see um, what I'm doing now is gluing essentially two boards together to be the vertical posts. And we're just throwing some glue, not really clamping because again i don't have clamps but we'll make it work one thing i gotta make sure of is that i leave enough room for a two by four to come across the top here so somehow my boards that were supposed to be 35 and 3 8 inch turned out to be 35 and a quarter so i was <laughs> cut it i apparently cut my my template one of eighth of an inch too short. Not gonna disrupt the integrity of the build. Um, just won't look quite as clean, but I've never really been one to be like, wow, I need it to be 
super pretty or anything like that. It's just, I'm looking for functionality uh, over form. I am by no means a carpenter or a master craftsman. I'm a, <laughs> I'm a do it yourself and get the job done <laughs> type person. Uh, to the point that I even thought about Really, we're just gluing these together um, to give them a little bit more strength and durability, but I could just screw them together. We wouldn't be as pretty because then we'd have all those screw holes. Part of me says, screw it. I'm just gonna screw it. Um, but right now I'm not going to. I'm, I will stick through the plan. We're gonna try and make this look as pretty as we can. Don't have clamps. I may end up having to screw these Anyways, even though I was gluing them. How's it going, sir? Um, it's going. Apply a heavy spread of glue, clamp for a minimum of 30 minutes. Okay, yeah. <laughs> clamp for a minimum of 30 minutes. Huh. That's pretty stable. That, that's good enough. <laughs> if by chance I need to come back through and put a screw in it, I'm gonna do that. But right now, this is sufficient. So I've made the executive decision to not just use wood glue. Wood glue. I am in fact going to use some, some decking screws to tie these together because the glue is not drying fast enough for the timeline that I would like to complete this in. I am gonna try and hide the screws as best I can um, in terms of putting it in from the back side that's gonna be like under the table rather than visible from the outside. I use decking screws for just about everything because they've got the T-head which is super efficient, and it, um, what else was I gonna say? Oh yeah, and they're good for in all weather, it's great. Okay, so what it mentions is basically gluing this stuff together, um, getting this lined up right here. So it just says, glue all this stuff together, However, in the instructions, it doesn't mention screwing these together, but it does show screw holes. And it just mentions basically getting these posts up and in. So we are going to do the same thing. For starters, let's go ahead and kick these in at the bottom. So it's a few hours later, had some dinner, milked the cows, and now I'm back at this, and I've been thinking about it. I've been thinking about it a lot. I'm gonna make a few slight design changes to this because one of the things that it calls out is we've got obviously these five verticals currently, and essentially there's two more verticals that the instructions say need to be added. One on this side, and one more on this side, like right, right before this. Now, the point of these two new verticals is to support the shelf that the table saw is going to sit on. But I'm thinking why, I understand the additional support over here totally makes sense. What I can't wrap my mind around is why have another vertical here if we've already got this one? There's, I don't see the purpose, especially because there's only gonna be like a two, maybe three inch gap between these. And I'm not, I'm not fond of that. One, it's using wood that I don't need to use, uh, especially considering I'm gonna already have to buy a few more uh, uh, pieces of two by four to make the additional cuts that I need. So I can save some wood by cutting out this piece. Plus then my shelf that this sits on just gets a little bit bigger. I can, you know, put a little bit more storage back here, which honestly I was gonna try and add additional shelving anyways so why not um the only thing that i could think of that may potentially be you know a benefit to having that extra post is just a smaller shelf meaning it it can better support the weight that's there but i can add an extra beam kind of in the middle to help support that so that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna save myself putting in another post here i'm gonna put a post right here that is uh, perpendicular to this, um, or not perpendicular, parallel to this, and then I will just make the shelf the whole size. So it's gonna be a bigger shelf.
You know how I was saying that these screws, I was doing it so that they wouldn't be visible from the outside? Well, I just screwed the pooch on this one. Now, this is the side that's already been established. This is 22 and three quarters. So that's 22 and three quarters up there as well. <laughs> Amazing what a fresh battery will do for you. So now because I've changed up the design a little bit, I don't need all of the same boards uh, that was originally called for. Basically all of these boards that I've got right here, you can't, can't really see them. I've got three, six, I've got eight boards here that up until this point, I mean, this is the excess that I have um, from those 10 original boards that I started with. So these eight pieces, there is still, you know, a few more things I need to do, uh, such as some brace bars across here, uh, building out the shelf here, framing out the shelf, the folding shelf for the miter saw. So I do still need some additional pieces for this. Um, I'm going to see what of this I will be able to cut uh, to make those pieces that I still need. Uh, trying to be as efficient as possible, keeping in mind that I am still gonna need to purchase additional boards. Thinking I'll be able to get away with just two boards at this point, uh, but we will see. I've got one board that is long enough to basically span this, and I'm gonna need, I think like four or five boards to span this, and that's where those two additional boards will come into play. Ariana told me, uh, well, I was going to just use these plans looking at my phone. Ariana told me to print them. I said, I don't wanna print them because I'm gonna use them and then it's gonna get thrown away. It's a waste of paper and ink. Um, she was right. I don't know what I would do if I did not have these printed. I would probably be losing my mind. Long story short, I'm glad I, uh, I'm glad I printed these. 32 and 5 eighths, I don't have anything to be able to cut 32 and 5 eighths right now. I need to basically make additional adjustments. Ah! So I'm trying to figure out, um, basically how big this shelf this folding shelf is his dimensions are he's using a different saw than i am so his dimensions are slightly different so what i want to do is based on my saw from front to back he's got his at 19 and 25 30 seconds i want to make that an even 20 inches and then i need what is the width there? My width should be pretty much what his is. This total length is going to be 32 and a half. Minus three is gonna be, um, means I need, what's that, 29, 29 and a half. So I need two 29 and a half inch, uh, 220 inch, and that gives me this fold away platform here. I should be able to cut all this with the materials I have right now. Um, and then this stuff I will have to get additional boards for. Twenty nine and a half on the money. Eleven sixteenths, which would be twenty twenty two. Twenty two. Yeah. 22, 30 seconds. Awesome. So that now wraps up basically all the cuts and everything that I can do with the wood that I have currently. Um, I mean, I do have the plywood that I could start cutting that stuff down, but I'm going to, at this point, begin assembling the miter shelf. Square as possible, button this up into the corner, standing it up vertically instead of trying to lay it down. Right now, these boards don't have this one that is actually gonna hold these parts so they're leaning a little closer together than they actually will. But this will, yeah, come up basically like this. We've gotta, we've gotta put a plywood top on this. It'll sit here. We've got this board up here that it hinges on and voila, this will <coughs> swing down. Uh, my wife went to Lowe's today and got me the three eight foot boards that I needed. So I got those cut down. So the, it was the four 34 inch boards and one 37 inch that I needed. I got pocket holes put into these already. And now it's time to assemble. Miter saw shelf that we finished last night. We'll get this hung. And then lastly, we will address the 
um, what's that called? The table saw shelf. So, and then at the very end, we will do the countertop. So looking at the plans, 34, 34, 34, 34, and then this right here is a 37. So I think actually I will go ahead and first get these in, get that crossbar, get that set up, and then we will, yeah, we'll go address that shelf. I don't know how people usually do pocket screws, but I like to actually get the pocket screw started for getting it into position, because then it's real easy. I don't have to be fiddling with stuff. I'm no expert carpenter here, but I can, uh, I can figure my way around some things. Let's make sure this is all still squared up properly. This is 40 inches. This is 40 inches. Beautiful. The pocket screw is in the perfect spot to hit the screw that's going into that board. Okay, perfect. I've got that, I got that bar installed. Basically what I need to do is I need to hang this under here, but I also need a, a surface. Uh, I need <laughs> to put some plywood over here. So I've got the worktop. This is what I'm using for the top, just half inch plywood. Um, and basically what I just did was I drew where I need to make the cuts and then I'm gonna have to probably just do a plunge cut across there. but it works. So now I'm just sanding down this shelf that's gonna go up here, just sanding the edges. I did get the shelf here, I'll show you in a minute. This is the shelf, I've got the hinges in the back here, and I've got these locking pins here, and boom. It drops, now I'm gonna install this guy right here, and then we can get the miter saw up there, woohoo! And all the dimensions should be good for this to basically be flush with the top of wood glue. And that needs to go in further. There we go, that is perfect. If we unlatch, boom. That hangs perfect. Flip it up. Oh, it gets me about seven inches from, um, what's this, the fence to the edge of the tabletop surface. Seven and a half, seven, seven and a half. So that's not terrible. I could easily lay a two by six here and cut that. Final size of the overall work, su work surface. Um, I do still have to cut out a portion here for the table saw, and I still need to build the shelf for the table saw, but I can now use this extra piece. Uh, that should be big enough. Yeah, that should be actually really like the perfect size to put down here for the shelf for the table saw. I got these three in. I still need to do the front board here, but I had to do them 13 inches from the top down to the top of this based on the height of my table saw and the height of the, the half inch plywood here and half inch plywood here. Okay, so. I assume most of our viewers, or at least most of our usual viewers may not know what some of these things are. What I'm doing right now is called a, a chalk line and essentially it allows you to span a long distance and get a perfectly straight line. So, you, like you just saw me do, measured basically both sides, so I knew where to go from this side over this side, get it nice and tight, and snap it just like I did, and that leaves a nice chalk line on the board showing me exactly where I need to cut. So what we can see here now is 
Here's my line for 26, it goes all the way across, and this is my 37. This is the, you can see, the previous cut that I did um, when I just cut this piece off of the main tabletop. Battery's dead. So that's one thing with battery powered tools. Obviously batteries can go dead. You have to have sufficient batteries for what you are doing, but the, the flexibility, the go anywhere ability with uh, power tools being battery powered is just, there's nothing like it. Okay, so basically that right there is what I need to cut out. Now, just need to do that on three more corners. Give it another shot, and boom, look at that. Okay, so I still haven't attached the shelf, but I set the table saw up here, and I was testing it out. And I will show you what I realized. Boom, it hits that because, oh, actually I think that's as far as it goes that way. But going this way, it hits on this side because I didn't make the shelf come out far enough. This really should have come out practically to the edge here. I've got somebody out helping me. Hi. Um, yeah, that's the top. Okay, so a couple of things. Uh, it, it was a couple of days ago that <laughs> I was last out here working on this. I got this cut out. I did the corners real nice. It fit perfectly. I put the table saw on and then the camera died. So I didn't get to show you. Because this was sitting back another inch and a half, the table saw, when I tried to extend the arms, it hit that. So I had to pull this shelf out a little bit. My solution was just, okay, cut that corner back another inch and a half on either side, pull the shelf out. And then the, the bar that was back here, I just moved in a little bit. So the, this is the one uh, remnant of my mistake in those two corners. Yeah, just make sure you actually hit that, well, um, that stud. I'm making yeah. a rough estimate. I also did cut out this little notch and that is basically, again, for those arms to extend through here. Um, I do need to cut this down just a tad bit more because it was still hitting that, so. So, made quite a bit of progress on the table uh, in little short spurts here and there, so I haven't been recording it. But basically got the tabletop in, got all this stuff. The, the table saw is good to go. I've already used that a couple times, works great. And, and also casters, I got the casters on. So this is fully movable. Oh man. And we it's went with great. the nice ones that you just push down. Yeah, rather than like those little toggle ones that yeah, are on and off. Annoying. Oh man, those, <laughs> ones, those ones are terrible to work with. Um, so really the last piece to like get this complete, there's a lot more modifications and things I wanna do after the fact, but to get this in like fully operational status is getting the miter saw uh, bolted on here. I didn't account for this giant screw handle um, And so it is out the, out further a little bit uh, than I expected and so now Trish trying to figure out again How to get this bolted on so we we're just looking at these I'll be able to go to tractor supply probably and get uh, what I need either like a screw or a bolt We'll go with bolts, but Ariana just pointed out because this has has to be so far forward and this is a one by a two by four, so it's a one and a half inch. I've only got, yeah, I should be able to get a, not a giant washer, a small washer, because I've got half inch clearance, give or take, actually about quarter inch clearance on this side of where the. I don't think your nut is going to be through. able to be. Okay, here's here's what I'm going to recommend. Okay, is I would move this further forward so you have room to. And then just adjust. go straight into the and then, two by four. Instead of using bolts on the front. Screw you right use the, the wood lag screws, yeah, because you can go right into that, that'll be solid, yeah, and then use the bolts use your bolts the on the back. That's not a bad idea. There you go. The thing you want to check is how much room do you have if you flip this down, just make right. sure you're not hitting there, yeah, which I think you should be good. It is yet again a few days later. Um, I have made some more progress on this. I got the miter saw mounted, Miss Aries out here now. So I got the miter saw mounted, uh, I think two days ago, maybe. I had to shim it, 
to get it level with the the surface, the worktop. Um, that's good to go. I think we recorded getting these sides on. I do need to put a brace on the inside of this uh, underneath just to make sure that stays level uh, and doesn't get pushed down a little bit. Um, I showed you I got the casters on. I just put this crossbar down here to do a shelf. Um, and I cut out this side, I cut out that side. It was one big piece, but due to size constraints of trying to fit it in, I couldn't get it in um, as one whole piece, so I had to cut it down the middle. And so now um, these both fit perfectly. Um, I was initially thinking I would do this as an undermount, uh, just to give you know that much more, another three and a half inches of, of storage space, but Ariana made a good point, and I will likely at some point want to put something heavier down here, which if it was undermounted, it wouldn't have any middle uh, support, and it just wouldn't be able to hold a whole lot of weight. Followed Ariana's good instruction, good advice, did that brace bar, and now I've got these, but I'm also thinking, you know, I initially over here was planning on doing a an undermount shelf as well. Oh, hi, Ginger. Yeah, Miss... Ginger's come to, decided to come join us in the garage. And so I was initially planning on doing an undermount over here. I, at this point, again, considering Ariana's advice, I'm not sure I'm going to do an undermount, but we'll probably just do a flush shelf up here. At which point, um, it would have to meet flush with this, which <laughs> obviously it couldn't do so and take advantage of this brace bar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shave another three quarters of an inch off of this side only. Um, that way I can do a mount or just a, a shelf here. However, I don't need to do it on that side because this, the miter saw flips down. I'm not able, able to really leverage any of that space anyways, unless I did an undermount. So I may potentially do an undermount on that side, um, but it definitely won't be an overmount. So this is good to go. I'm just gonna shave, like I said, three quarters of an inch off of this one only, and then we'll get these tacked down, and then look at potentially doing something on this side. So if you put your eye down here, can you still see the blade? Yeah. Okay, then we're good. Push this down, and when it starts making noise, then you pull the trigger. Ready? But isn't this stuck with those nails? Yeah. What? what mostly everything stuck with these? Yep. All um, of the tops were. That's probably why it's mostly all gone. That's a bit more sturdy, and we could check for true level. -ness. Level -ness. Uh, I'd say that's pretty darn good. Now obviously keeping in mind that um, the ground isn't necessarily totally, totally level because it is uh, sloped for drainage. I got it to the point of completion. I want to show you the, the last final tweaks that I did make to it. Um, but I guarantee there's still going to be things, you know, over the next couple of weeks, months or whatever, as I really start using it, that I'm I may tweak. So I've got my, my safety glasses right next to the saw. This one, this one over here, I, I was pretty proud of. Basically, I just put that screw there and I'm leveraging the fact that it's gonna rest right there. And so it just holds it perfectly. Um, so over here, this is, uh, I got this done yesterday. Basically just tabletop there that is removable. I believe I showed this previously. Miter saw obviously got mounted up. Um, and one of the things that I wanted to do was take advantage of the space back there. Now initially, when I hung this, because this is so front heavy, this swung back like all the way back to here. And it was, it was at an angle like this, which obviously wastes all of this space back here. Basically it's flushed to the front, which came out to be about a, a 10 degree angle. So got these boards, one on this side and then one on that side. So as we can see, it just rests flush on that. So that supports it. And now I have all of this space back here for storage. Got this shelf, um, got basically just this trash can 
for now, obviously. And then we've got the rest of the shelving. You guys saw all that. I made that cut, which was perfect. Now this board wasn't totally, <laughs> wasn't totally square. Not a huge deal. Again, not looking for perfection here, but uh, I am, I'm pretty pleased with it. So here's the cord for the miter saw. I'll put a couple of holes in there. And then I do intend to mount a power strip right up here. So we'll keep the miter saw plugged in. We'll keep the table saw plugged in. And then I'll be able to just have that the tail end of that power strip to plug in to an extension cord or whatever. One other thing I do wanna do here is um, get a little shop vac. I've got a giant shop vac that won't fit here, but at some point get a little shop vac that I can put right here and basically just have connected to both saws and just make it really easy to keep that everything clean because as you can see, look at all that, uh, all that sawdust there. Um, and then yeah, so got all this storage down here. I'm, I'm happy with this. I think this is going to work very, very well. It already is working very well um, in what I've had to do with it so far. And I know I said when I started building this, I didn't really care about how it looked. It was just purely about functionality and truly that was the intent, just pure functionality. But I did try to you know, as we were going through, make sure screws and stuff that I did use weren't as visible, doing the pocket screws and all that. Um, and I actually really like how it looks. I think it looks pretty clean. I think I mentioned previously, like during the build, the plans are a bit iffy. There's some stuff that I would have expected to be in there that weren't in there or weren't called out. Um, and so I did obviously make quite a few tweaks and customizations um, that weren't in the plan, but that's okay. The Really, the plans were just to get me the, the foundation. If you enjoyed the video, hit that thumbs up, hit that subscribe button if you're new. And like I said, we will drop the link to these plans on Etsy uh, in the description below. So if you wanna check it out, if you wanna get it for yourself and, and build a nice looking table like that, you can certainly do so. <laughs> And look at this, we are being joined by a couple of chickens. Mm -hmm.